Welcome to part one of a special Google I.O. 2025 edition of Now in Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in Android development. This first part will cover a bunch of changes related to the latest evolution of material design, watches, cars, tablets, laptops, and connected displays, the latest in adaptive app development, XR development, how to take advantage of on-device and cloud-based AI, and Android 16. We began I.O. season with a special edition of The Android Show, where we introduced the latest evolution of material design, Material 3 Expressive. Material 3 Express adds a new motion physics system, new type styles for variable and static fonts, an expanded shape library with morphing animations, and an expanded range of colors. At I.O., build next-level UX with Material 3 Expressive, covered how to use the new expressive design patterns, breaking down the research, explaining new guidelines, and including new design files and code. The Android show also covered how we're bringing Material 3 Expressive to watches with Wear OS 6. And at I.O., we launched the Wear OS 6 Developer Preview, allowing you to test your apps using the Wear OS 6 emulator. Wear OS 6 introduces watch face format v4, with a new Watch Face Push API designed to support Watch Face marketplaces. With new Watch Face features like the Photos element, transitions, and enhanced support for color transforms. The What's New in Wear OS 6 post from I.O. covers lots more, including new tile components, the new edge hugging button, the transforming lazy column, a new scroll indicator and progress indicator, credential manager for Wear OS, and richer Wear media controls. Cars are getting new in-car app experiences, including the integration of Gemini, production support for weather apps, and beta support for communications apps and games. Support is being added for building media apps with the Car App Library, enabling richer and more complete media app experiences. You can learn about all of that and more, plus get a preview of what's coming in the What's New in Android Auto Talk and the new in-car app experiences post. Google TV and Android TV achieved over 270 million monthly active devices. And we announced that Compose for TV 1.0 is now stable. Android 16 is now available in beta for TV, and you can use the Android emulator for TV to validate your apps for platform compatibility and try out new TV interface capabilities and APIs. For more on TV, including the Video Discovery API for partners, the new in-app ratings and reviews API, and how we're bringing Gemini to the biggest screens in the house, check out Engage Users on Google TV with excellent TV apps. We also released Developer Preview 2 of the Android XR SDK. It adds support for stereoscopic video encoded using the MVHEVC standards new layouts that adapt to different XR display configurations, and new component overrides in material design for XR. We also announced an upcoming portable Android XR device from our partners at Xreal. AR Core for Jetpack XR can now directly track hands, allowing for custom gesture controls and more. The Android XR emulator has received key updates and is now fully integrated within Android Studio. Unity has updated to pre-release 2 of the OpenXR Android XR package with an improved mixed reality template and many performance improvements. You can learn more about building for Android XR with the Building Differentiated Apps for Android XR with 3D Content session covering Jetpack Scene Core and AR Core for Jetpack XR, as well as the future is now with Compose and AI and Android XR covering the latest changes in Jetpack Compose for XR and how your adaptive apps can extend your reach into XR along with AI on XR. Making your app adaptive is key for expanding your app's reach into auto, XR, tablets, laptops, and desktops. The Adaptive Android Development Makes Your App Shine Across Devices talk covers the latest updates in desktop windowing, including enhanced support for external displays. It goes through how to make use of the latest adaptive libraries, including Navigation 3, how to test your app, and how to be ready for the changes Android 16 brings to large screen devices. The Unlock User Productivity with Desktop Windowing and Stylus Support talk covers how to make sure your app is ready to be productive on Android, including support for connected displays and styluses. Finding the perfect Gemini fit on Android covers the breadth of AI APIs available for your Android app, including new on-device APIs covering summarization, proofreading, rewriting, and image description, Gemini Flash, Pro and Imagine Cloud models through Firebase, and support from Google AI Edge to help you build and deploy custom models to devices, including the Play for On-Device AI to help you deliver your models to devices. 
on-device generative AI goes deeper into the new MLKit APIs for summarization, proofreading, rewriting, and image description powered by Gemini Nano, as well as a bit of where we're going in the future. Enhance your Android app with Gemini Pro, Flash, and Imagine covers how to use Firebase to leverage powerful cloud AI models, allowing you to build differentiating Gemini, Gemini Live, and image generation experiences into your app. Finally, What's New in Android covered all the news around Android 16, including the impending launch of 16 and the upcoming minor SDK release. We released the beta of the first Android 16 quarterly platform release at I.O., which allows you to see how we're implementing some of the material expressive changes in the Android platform. Android 16 includes live updates that notify users of important ongoing user-facing progress and come with a new progress style standardized template the new Digital Credentials and Restore Credentials APIs in Credential Manager, the latest in using the Privacy Sandbox, and a shout out to our new Learning Pathway, Advanced Protection Mode and Identity Check, Medical Records APIs, New Permissions, and Background Reads of Health Data, Changes to Set Important While Foreground in Job Scheduler, Edge to Edge Enforcement, and either Migration or an Opt-out required if your app intercepts the back event. That's it for part one of our I.O. coverage in Now and Android, with Material Expressive, watches, cars, tablets, laptops, connected displays, the latest in adaptive app development, XR development, AI, and Android 16. Part two of our coverage will include the latest from Android Jetpack, Jetpack Compose, and Android Studio, so be sure to tune in. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and stay safe. And come back soon for more of Now and Android. Mm -hmm.